readily available. Um, of course, this was an oversight on my end, and for that I apologize. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Dejerly, you have the floor. Thank you, Clerk, for, for that. I really do appreciate your apology, and it's a level of accountability that I think we can all learn from in this committee when being accountable to our actions. And I particularly think, Mr. Chair, that you've already done the action of spending taxpayer dollars. You've already asked us to come to come to committee during a non-sitting week. Um, and it's a conservative control committee. I understand this is a conservative control committee. They get to spend how much money you want. And so I feel I'm outnumbered and outgunned here. And so for those reasons, I guess I'll have to submit as long as, as well as taxpayers to the conservatives demand to continuously spend their money. I don't see the logic in it, trying to investigate $60 million and spending $60 million to do it. Uh, doesn't make sense to me, doesn't make sense to Canadians. But I'm happy to have the meeting since it sounds like, Mr. Chair, if you can't confirm, you've already spent the money. Uh, the money's been spent for next week. We've got to have that meeting no matter what. So I'd say let's just call a vote. But I really do think my amendment to the motion is a good one, and it should have us reflect on the kinds of ways we're spending taxpayer dollars, particularly in this conservative control committee. So I'm happy with going forward, Chair, with next week. Uh, you've already spent the money. Um, let's do the meeting, but let's really be serious about this going forward. Let's be serious about how much it costs to have these meetings for taxpayers. Thank you. First of all, am I the last on the list? Well, that can change. I'll be quick because we have 45 minutes left and we're trying to focus on what the nub of what we're looking for is. It's accountability. It's shedding light on what's happening. So I would say, as other colleagues have said, I think about the taxpayers who are watching. They might not be that numerous, but they're there. I think we're ready for a vote, and we can try to drop some, partisan, some of the partisanship that's seizing the opportunity to make partisan points. We can be constructive, and we can look at these reports that have been around since February. I hope we can move forward. Clerk, could you call the roll Madame call, Shannon please? Shannon oh, Shannon. pardon, Madame Shanahan. Madame I, I even did a second look, didn't see anyone. Ms. Shanahan, over to you. Clarification, pour, uh, parce que... a clarification. I think the way in which information is shared is quite a serious matter. The clerk may be able to confirm at what time we received at what time the PDF was created, um, the PDF with Mr. Nader's motion today. It seems to be around uh, uh, 2.33 p.m. And some members did seem to have information before the meeting had begun. PDF that you received? Uh, so the PDF of the, uh, of the motion was created uh, apparently uh, just prior to the meeting at uh, 2.33, which means that Mr. Nader had the information about Mr. Girard prior to you speaking to us about it at 3.30. Mr. Nader, go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. We created that uh, PDF or that uh, uh, notice of motion uh, prior to question period today because we had no confirmation uh, that Mr. Girard had, uh, had agreed to attend this committee. Mm -hmm. And we also had a, a clarification that uh, Mr. Rozowski was uh, declining our so we created a, a motion to summon the two uh, witnesses. And, Simple as and that. You had that prior to, to the other uh, committee members. Chair, um, as Ms. Shanahan would know, we received an email from our clerk saying that Mr. Ozowski had declined, and we had not received any notification from Mr. Girard, which is why we had the impetus to write this motion. Mm -hmm. And that is why I submitted the motion, uh, which is before you. It's as simple as that. Oh, my goodness. I think it is clear. Thank you. Could you call the question, clerk? No, Blake's amendment passed. This is the actual motion as, why don't I read it? Pardon. Okay. Uh, Second. 
I'll have the clerk read it, s'il vous plaît. Yes, here. So the motion, re as amended, reads as follows that John Nasowski and Paul Girard be summoned to appear before the committee on Thursday, May 16th, 2024, in relation to the study on Report 1, a RIVE CAN of the 2024 reports of the Auditor General of Canada, and that members be provided an estimate of the cost of this meeting. Shall the motion of Mr. Nader, as amended, be adopted? Ms. Bradford? Yes. Ms. Khalid? Yes. Ms. Shanahan? Yes. Mr. Sorbera? Yes. Ms. Yip? Yes. Mr. Nader? Yes. Mr. Stewart? Yes. Mr. Schmail? Yes. Madame Gaudreau? Monsieur Desjardins? Yes. Ten yeas. That is passed. Uh, I'm going to just raise the next point. Um, I'll look for comments, and if I don't receive it, I will, of course, move us into camera. Uh, as previously, previously mentioned, Minister Haiju has declined to appear uh, to discuss Report 3, Housing in First Nations Communities. just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention. Um, and I see Mr. Desjardins has his hand up, so I'll turn things over to you, Mr. Mr. Desjardins. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and I want to thank all members of our committee for your support in this motion. It was meaningful for me and meaningful to First Nations across our country to see support and unanimous support across party lines, to see the minister invited to be accountable for what is a very serious and sad and deplorable state that's facing my relatives and First Nations across the country. It's been no secret Auditor General after Auditor General after Auditor General has said this is beyond unacceptable. We know that there are still boil water advisories. We know from the Auditor General herself that nothing is being done to address more seriously the issue of who is accountable for these immense failures. Absent of the courts, this has been something that our political entities for decades and decades have not contributed fair value towards. Mr. Chair, I, I seek your advice in this regard. I understand that a minister may not appear to be held accountable on this committee. Uh, it breaks my heart, and I think it certainly will for the First Nations I've spoken to, including that of Treaty 6, who was hoping to hear from the minister themselves uh, as to why she wasn't going to be present and how she was going to implement an action plan to see the very serious issues presented in the Auditor General's report um, taken seriously. And so I believe we cannot summon a minister. Uh, we can only invite them. Um, I'm troubled by this because we've now issued an invitation. And so is there any other mechanism, Chair, that you are aware of to which we can summon a minister or even a deputy minister, I suppose, or someone to be held accountable that represents the government or Indigenous Services Canada to actually come to, to, to speak to us and our representatives that we've invited like the Grand Chief from Treaty 6, to be held accountable for the conditions in his communities. Ms. Dejali, I'm, I, I have a few thoughts on it uh, that, I've, that I've raised with the clerk, but I'd like to hear a few more comments from the, from the floor, if you, if you, if you don't mind. Uh, I see Mr. Schmale had, uh, had his, had his, uh, would, like, would like to address us. So Mr. Schmale, and I'm, I'm looking for others as well. So you have the floor, sir, Mr. Schmale. Thank you, Chair. I appreciate this opportunity to speak on this, and uh, I am uh, I am quite uh, quite happy that the NDP now is is seeing that there needs to be respect for taxpayer dollars. And our previous conversation enlightens me the fact that uh, they, they order, do Chair? care about that. I thought that. we were talking about First Nations housing and I, that was my first comment. Former motion. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Dijon. That's 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 a, 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 I, I often allow all members. They're a little, a little drive-by, and all members take them. So, Mr. Schmale, you have the floor, please. He's getting to his main point. I can tell, Mr. Desjardins. Thank you. And, and, and just a half second later, I was going to say I support uh, Mr. Desjardins' um, concern and um, absolute shock that the uh, Minister of Indigenous Services has refused to um, come to this committee and, and speak about the horrible conditions that Indigenous communities face um, on community for housing. I should also point out, as the Vice Chair for the Indigenous and Northern Affairs Committee, uh, Minister Heiju has actually 
declined our invitations to, to attend. In fact, there were multiple invites to that minister. Even her... She was even invited to come to the committee to talk about the supplemental estimate Bs. She has yet to come to that committee to talk about the SUP Bs, and you know how long ago that was. I believe we now have her coming in the uh, Thursday after the break week to talk about the, the estimates. Even that's cutting it close. Uh, so I, I think that department, although it continues to get uh, extraordinarily large in terms of the, the people that are going into that department, but yet we are seeing the results go down, the outcomes go down, and that has been proven by the Auditor General, the Parliamentary Budget Officer, and many others. And now we are seeing issues with, ongoing issues that have not got better with Jordan's principal, with non-insured health benefits, housing, drinking water, et cetera, et cetera. And the fact that this minister refuses to actually show up to either committees, one of which, looking after Indigenous and Northern Affairs, is absolutely shameful. Um, it has been pointed out to me and potentially an issue for this committee to deal with, and perhaps we will get to it at the INAN committee as well, is the fact that we can actually ask the House to compel the Minister to come to this committee and answer these very important questions. Thank you, Chair. Thank, thank you, uh, Mr. Schmidl. I see no one else with uh, with with, um, with, uh, with a hand up except for Mr. Dizzy. You have the floor, sir. Thank you, Chair. I appreciate Mr. Schmiel's comments, and uh, I find him to be a very honourable member as well. We've worked together on these issues many times, and I just the last portion of what he mentioned about uh, was that a potential was that a proposal to a, for a tool that we would be able to have. Sorry, maybe I can get clarification. If we can, can we actually summon a minister? Because if so, I would love to summon her. Let's summon her right now. So, Mr. Nader, why don't I, you're the in-house expert here, um, uh, and since this is a political matter, I will refer to you before we come back to the clerk in the House administration, but you have the floor, please. Sure, and I mean, our, our clerk would certainly correct my terminology if I get anything wrong, but I believe that we as a committee could table report in the House, which would ask the House to compel the attendance, and I'm, compel might be the wrong word, but to uh, require the attendance of the, uh, the minister um, at this committee. Um, so that would be one possibility, and I think, I don't want to speak for my colleagues, but I think that's something we'd obviously be supportive of. I mean, for a minister to decline to be held accountable to committees, um, I think that's unfortunate. That's something to consider. Madame Godreau, I view the comment that we see, and Mr. Desjardins. Ms. Godreau, do you have any comments? I'll come back to you, Mr. Desjardins. I want to talk about my experiences uh, with, uh, at PROC and ethics. Committees are masters of their own fate. They make choices. As long as members vote and approve it, they can require witnesses to come and be accountable. At PROC, we had a lot of ministers appearing. And here, about public accounts, it's very important to shed light on a given situation like the one we're talking about, particularly since it is in the Auditor General's report. So, Mr. Chairman, if the committee votes to approve the minister's appearance, that would be a very legitimate request. That's it. I concluded. Ooh, Mr. Dejali, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and I really do appreciate Ms. Goudreau and Mr. Nader and Mr. Schmiel's comments today in support of options to look at this. I, listen, I'm fully cooperative in our approach to find an option for this, uh, how we actually get the minister to be accountable to this this audit. Um, and maybe I'd, I'd actually invite Mr. Chair, a member of the Liberal Party, maybe it's as easy as the, her own members speaking to her about the importance of this. 
Um, I understand there could be a loss of communication. There could be, you know, an issue of, of maybe she doesn't understand the urgency quite yet of the fact that their auditor general has now had many reports. Uh, but we need to explore all tools. Um, if we are truly masters our, of our committee, and I think Ms. Godreau is right, uh, we should be able to f at least compel her in some way, shape, or form, unless there's advice from you, Chair, that we can't. But to Mr. Nader's point, I, I really want to explore that. And I think, Mr. Nader, with your support and with with Mr. Schmiel's support, we could look at options in the House of Commons to, to do something like that. Of course, we would stand in full support of that kind of recommendation to the House that could compel our com committee to summon her. Why don't I, I'm going to just read out the sections that will help focus attention, and then I'll turn to Mr. Smale, who I believe wanted to, to address us. Um, and quote, uh, this is on page 892 in English. If a member of the House of Commons refuses an invitation to appear before a standing committee, and the committee decides that such an appearance is necessary, it may so report to the House, and it will be up to the House to decide what measures should be taken. So that is the path that the committee has to um, not compel the witness, but begin the process to have the House of Commons decide what steps will be taken. Mr. Schmale, please. I just want to build on this conversation as well, more for our counterparts around the table that um, may just be uh, new to this uh, developing situation. And uh, I bring to the attention of Mr. Desjardins, if he remembers back during the discussions of C-53, the Métis Self-Governing uh, Act that we were discussing just before Christmas and into January, the, the agreement at that time were, was for the, the sub-Bs, this is months ago now, that if we got C-53 through committee, at that point, the ministers would gladly appear to answer questions of the committee. We have no ministers to date. We are told just a few weeks ago that we're still waiting on, on a date that works in their schedules. So uh, just painting the picture for everybody in this room that if we take it to the next step where we have to have a vote on, on a particular motion. This is an ongoing problem, not just here, but at INAN, in a department that is swelling with bureaucracy, but yet the results are going down the drain. And these are Indigenous lives at stake here. Housing is horrible conditions. Drinking water, again, ongoing challenges. People not having drinking water that's safe. Jordan's principle endless concerns about that. Um, so I could go on and on, but uh, like my friend from the block said, let's, let's, if there is a, a path forward to have a motion, let's get to a vote. But I wanted to inform the committee, those that might not be aware of what's uh, going on at the INAN committee, that there are serious issues with getting Minister Heiju to appear. Thank you. Ms. Bradford, you have the floor, please. And I just noticed Ms. Dejale, but I saw Mr. Bradford first, so please. Mr. Chair, can you share with us the reason that the minister gave to you that she couldn't come to our committee? I will, yes, I will, I, it was the clerk who sent it to me, and the clerk is occupied, so I'm going to try to find it. Oh, oh, she, I'll look as well. Oh, the clerk will read it. <laughs> the ISC minister will be appearing at INAN on June 3rd on the subject of the OAG report on Indigenous housing. As such, Minister Haidu's office has indicated that she is declining this invitation to appear at PAC on the same topic. I understand it then. She is appearing at INAN at the same time that we were wanting her to appear here. No, Mr. Schmel, I'll, I'll hear from you after, so yes. She's appearing at INAN at the exact time, so she can't be here. Like, there's a valid reason, clearly, that she can't be two places at once. Uh, allow, but we didn't give her a date. We asked for a date. Okay, so it would seem that there, as often happens with committees, there's duplication where we ask the same witnesses to appear at multiple committees on the same topic, which, again, if we're talking about using uh, and misusing resources effectively, um, 
here would seem to be another example. If she's being asked to appear on the same topic at more than one committee, and in this case, yes, it, it does seem to be a conflict of time as well. Mr. Dejle, it seems that you and I are now being balled together, um, misusing resources, but you have the floor, and then I'll see Mr. Schmale. No, thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and I do see the potential irony in that, but I'm not calling for an extra meeting, you might see. I'm calling for the regular resources for the minister to attend. And two points, Ms. Bradford, to your point, yes, INAN, they're going to INAN, as they should go to INAN. It's the, it's the Committee for Indigenous and Northern Affairs Canada, but this is the Auditor General's Committee. She tabled a report on here. You are responsible, Ms. Bradford, for investigating and properly investigating the outcome of the Auditor General's reports. That's the mandate of this committee. Unless I've mistakenly heard you, I don't think you intended to imply that we should ignore the Auditor General's report and ignore our mandate in this committee to actually pursue the core objective and mandate of this committee, or it can be seen or perceived by your comments that you wish to ignore this very real and legitimate concern on behalf of First Nations or the mandate of this committee, which is it? Am I allowed to respond? I, I can put you on the list, but I, I had Mr. Schmale first. So Mr. Schmale, and Mr. Dijon, I'm gonna ask you to put your hand down. And you're welcome to put it back up, but I, I just want you, to, want you to go. Thank you. Mr. Schmale, uh, and then I have a little list here, but you're back on it, Ms. Bradford. Go ahead, Mr. Okay, Schmale. Thank you, Chair. I, I don't have my notes in front of me. I'm just looking through my uh, binder, but uh, I do believe that when the minister is appearing on the 22nd, it is for the, the estimates, mm -hmm. but I, I'm getting, uh, I'm looking for a confirmation on that. Thank you. Mr. Stewart. Yes, um, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I remember uh, just if I could add something to the seriousness of the issue to uh, Mr. Desjardins' comment. As former Minister of, of Aboriginal Affairs in New Brunswick, I had, um, as you can imagine, I had, uh, you know, 16 altogether First Nations, um, but I also had four uh, in, my, in my current constituency. And I remember... I, yeah, I, re I remember the. Um, I, I remember one community in particular. The chief called me, and asked me if I could drive down, and see something in his community. When I got there, I got into the truck uh, with the chief, who's about my own age, and he had this picture uh, on on the tr in his truck, and it was a picture of him, at about age ten or eleven, with uh, four other friends, all the same age. They were all deceased, um, except for him at this point in time, many to suicide. And uh, we had a pretty heartfelt conversation about um, the community and, you know, some of the struggles. Obviously, Jordan's principle was always topical. But in terms of the housing uh, issues in that particular community, and this is why the minister uh, of any of these departments related to Indigenous affairs. This is why they should always agree to whatever invitation they're getting. I went that day, I went to a house and there was mold everywhere. There was mold all over the house and I have asthma. So as soon as I walked into that, I started breathing terribly because I have chronic asthma and uh, you, could, you could visibly see it was black mold and it was everywhere. What was more interesting is in that household it would have been suitable for a family of, you know, maybe, you know, maybe four people, maybe five max, and there there was probably 16 or 17 people living uh, in in that house that that I that I was aware of, uh, as per the chief. And there were programs, uh, federal programs, they were trying to achieve to fix the mold problem. Band council couldn't couldn't afford it. Their money was stretched to other programs and projects. And uh, there was this huge pot of money in the federal government. I forget the exact name of the program, but they couldn't achieve it. And the people in the, in the house didn't have the sort of the know-how to get rid of all this mold. And they had nowhere else to go because the, the community was already down probably 400 units. This was a big, a big community in the Mi'kmaq territory of New Brunswick. So I just I just wanted to say that that you know at those times what I what I observed you know it really changes everything for me 
And I think the minister should simply just agree to whatever invitation uh, we're inviting them to because it's so important. And, and I just wanted to share that. Thank you. Thank you. On that files are always always welcome. Ms. Bradford, you'd asked for a, a turn. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So just to clarify the thread, I'm getting back, I'm responding to Mr. Desjolais. So the reason I raised the question with the chair was I was wanting him to share with the members of this committee uh, what reason, if any, the minister gave that she was unavailable. So that's why I raised the question. Uh, I believe that, um, you know, typically what we normally would do is that um, we normally, the process of this committee would be to review the report and bring the AG with department officials in as this committee has historically done. And we usually deal with deputy ministers as well, not ministers. So, and even our chair has mentioned that it is irregular for us to ask ministers to appear, that normally it is the deputy minister that appears before uh, the public accounts committee. Thank you. Mr. Dejali, you have the floor again. No, Ms. Bradford, I, I do appreciate that, and I hope you can appreciate the severity of the Auditor General's call to, to do more. And she demanded that we, we have a level of accountability that is beyond the regular statutes of this committee. And I, although I appreciate the comment of the regular processes that we would take under an audit, like in having the Deputy Minister of Transport talk to us about a few, you know, some rail ties that were incomplete in the last fiscal year. I want to press upon you the urgency. If I haven't already, and if the Auditor Generals over the last 20 years haven't already, I hope you can understand the severity. Mr. Stewart just submitted a very legitimate and a very sad reality of what the state of First Nations housing is. This is an emergency. It's life or death. That's what we're talking about. He, ha he has asthma. Imagine an Indigenous child with asthma right now in that house with all that mold. I don't know about you, but I have many people in my life that I would not want to see living in a deplorable state like that. This is the worst instance of our country. I've spoken many times on how I'm firmly a believer that what the lack of action in this work amounts to a genocide. If we do not do something, Ms. Bradford, I'm, I, I'm begging you to see with, with clarity and with humanity how important this work is. And it's unfortunate that the minister hasn't appeared. The deputy minister herself has spoken about the fact that she, she as well has her hands tied. We need a level of accountability it's been decades and decades of sitting on hands. The Auditor Generals, for the last three Auditor Generals, have said this is beyond unacceptable. Can we please have the unanimous support to see a motion that would actually ensure that this work could get done? And so I would move that just the Mr. Standing Day, Committee... Just, sorry, hold, 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 just, um, I'm just going to pause you because I, you have sent me a note asking for information. I have sent ask the clerk to send all members the information. What you have is a draft of a previous one. You will need to work on it uh, with better language. That, that is just a, a, a template for you to work with, as you can see. Um, see. Um, so, but Ms. Uh, Bradford like the floor, so I can give you a few minutes um, and if you're still working please, on it and there's no speakers, I will suspend because I see your intent. But Ms. Bradford, you have the floor, please. Uh, to Mr. Desjolais, I would just like to confirm that, um, you know, I really don't want you making this personal as though I'm uncaring. I was merely raising a question. Why did the minister say she was unavailable? And I think that was a fair thing to do. Of course I care. I don't think there's a person on this committee that is not alarmed and uh, not aware of the severity of the situation as indicated in the AG's report. That's not what's in question here. So I just wanted to clarify that um, I feel it's unfair that you to con construe that, you know, I or anyone else on this committee, I think, does not take this situation very seriously. Of course it is. Thank you. I'm not seeing more speakers, but I, I, I get a drift for, for a bit, Mr. Jay, well, what I was going to do, I was going to suspend for uh, just a few minutes, Mr. Jay, because you're right in the middle of this, of this debate. 
I think you need a few minutes to craft your language. So I'll suspend for three to five minutes, five, five minutes, I see. Sorry, Chair. Can oh. I just make the last comment? Of course, yes. Just yes. in response to Ms. Yes, but you, you, will, you will, when I unsuspend, you will get the first, uh, the first turn, so. Yes, no, I, I just want to be able to make certain that Ms. Bradford understands that this is not intended to be personal, and I apologize if you feel that you've been of personal offense uh, to this work. I hope you can understand the balance of temperament I must have as it's a severe issue for me personally. And it's very difficult to imagine a scenario where this level of accountability could be sidetracked. And so for the, for the purposes of your offense, I apologize. But for the purposes of summoning the minister, uh, I believe we can get support. Very good. That's very good of you, Mr. Dijelay. I will suspend for uh, three to five minutes. If uh, And so don't go far from this room again. This meeting is suspended.
into order. Alors, s'il vous plaît. Mr. Desjardins, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And I've spoken many times to the immense urgency that Indigenous housing presents to communities across our country. It's clear that the federal government, through subsequent audits, stemming back as far as 30 years ago, with the commitments that were made by governments in addition to the fact that the Auditor General has confirmed that many of those results haven't hit their targets and that Indigenous people continue to suffer deplorable living conditions, that it amounts to an emergency. Because of those reasons, Mr. Chair, I'd like to move a motion that the Standing Committee on Public Accounts report to the House that the member for Thunder Bay Superior North has refused to testify before the Committee on Matters Relating to Report 2, Housing in First Nations Communities, and of the 2024 reports 2 to 4 of the Auditor General of Canada, and that the Committee recommends that the House order the member for Thunder Bay Superior North to appear before the Committee on a date and time to be determined by this Committee. So moved. I have a speaking list, Mr. Dejolay, so I'm going to turn to that. It's difficult when interpreters don't have the motion. It's uh, great to print it out and give it to them. Very helpful. Oh, and I'm, I'm going to, je vais demander notre greffier de lire la motion. I will ask uh, the, to read the motion again. Just as well. Mr. Dejolay, why don't you put your hand down and you can put it back up right away if you like. But uh, thank you. That's just helpful just so it resets my brain. And the, uh, and, uh, the, the clerk is going to read the motion in French as well. La motion, c'est... That the Standing Committee on Public Accounts report to the House that the member for Thunder Bay Superior North has refused to testify before the Committee on Matters Relating to Report 2, Housing in First Nations Communities, of the 2024 reports 2 to 4 of the Auditor General of Canada, and that the Committee recommends that the House order the member for Thunder Bay Superior North to appear before the Committee on a date and time to be determined by this Committee. There. Yes, I have Ms. Yip to begin with. Thank you, Chair. Um, the letter that was sent, um, I just feel that there is a process and um, a progression that um, I feel that we should take before we go to um, what the motion has suggested. And I would like to propose that we send another letter before going straight to the House to ask another time to the minister to come to make sure that there isn't, um, to make it very clear what the intent is and to perhaps look at the schedule a little bit more closely. And I think that to go from A to C is, um, um, perhaps a little bit, uh, it, it, it could be done in a way that we could be more perhaps just giving another chance for the minister to consider our request. Th thank you. Uh, Ms. Shanahan, you had a, uh, expressed an interest to, to speak. You have the floor, please. Uh, yes, Chair. I think you recall that um, uh, when this uh, request came up um, a few meetings ago, uh, I, I spoke to um, the fact that, uh, that this is a committee, public accounts, doing the work of uh, reviewing the Auditor General reports which uh, typically uh, has a deputy, more than typically, it was actually uh, uh, a former NDP member, uh, David Christofferson, who fought 
uh, for the imperative that this committee see deputy ministers because he saw at the time uh, and, um, and was quite uh, uh, emphatic uh, when uh, we, uh, many of us new members in 2015 joined the public accounts that it, it's the accountability in the delivery mechanism, because I think that that is, and I share the concerns of uh, Mr. Desjardins uh, in the sense that, the, that, that this has been treated, this topic um, uh, in various uh, ways and, and forms has been um, uh, treated by the Auditor General's office, and uh, it uh, feels like um, that the uh, results are not being felt on the ground, and uh, and that is, uh, I think, after you know successive um, uh, changes in in uh, policy and direction, certainly a massive um, influx of investment into. Um, Indigenous affairs uh, never before seen uh, in uh, in the history of our of our government, and uh, and that um, as this committee has been able to determine on um, uh, through uh, questions and testimony from uh, department officials, it very often has to do with. Um, gaps in data collection, uh, uh, inability to, um, uh, to work collaboratively with uh, Indigenous communities, um, a kind of a um, uh, colonial um, uh, historical, um, you know, blindness and deafness to uh, uh, the um, to what is going on on the um, on the ground, um, or in uh, other cases where um, there were good intentions and uh, a desire to um, move uh, quickly to fix problems like um, uh, oil water advisories. Uh, but if I think of some of the policies of uh, previous uh, governments to simply go in and build a water treatment plant, uh, invest money, but then uh, not uh, ensuring that, uh, that there was um, capacity uh, in the community to maintain and keep that water treatment plant going. You know, things that um, uh, if there had been more consultation, more serious consultation, more um, attention, uh, more informed um, delivery by um, uh, the people in our public service who we have entrusted uh, these uh, policies and programs to, to execute, uh, that indeed uh, it, it, um, uh, it didn't happen until uh, I think that there was a sea change uh, in uh, the approach, and uh, we actually see in the matter of oil water advisories a significant improvement, and, uh, and I think that that is a testament to uh, our public servants that uh, who, who uh, uh, deeply care Point of order. Uh, about... Uh, this issue. I have a point of order, yes. Can uh, Ms. Shanahan confirm that she's filibustering? That, that's not a point of order, Ms. Shanahan. Well, you, you have the you minister, have, you, you, you have we're the floor. inviting her to come Order, or not, order. Right? Ms. Shanahan has the floor. Well, thank you very much, uh, Chair. Point of and, order. Uh, I'm sorry, Ms. Shanahan, I'm here another point of order. Mm -hmm. I think that was from Mr. Desjardins. It's a point of order on relevance, Mr. Chair. And just if I can comment quickly. If the Liberals are going to filibuster, no, okay. I have no more energy. Mm -hmm. No, nope. Mr. Mr. I see your hand, Mr. Desjardins. I, 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 well Mr. Desjardins, I, I see your hand, and I, I appreciate your your thoughts. Mr. Ms. Shanahan has the floor, uh, and she's well within her rights on these topics. In point d'ordre, Madame. In oui. in point d'ordre, oui. oui. Point of order. 
does the committee have a certain duration of time? We don't have much time, but we do have some time. It's uh, like a like a soccer match. We go into overtime, and the meeting will go on until I say we're out of time. For now, there is time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Chair. And uh, indeed, what I'm what I'm speaking to is uh, the um, functioning of this committee and how it is that this committee addresses uh, the uh, review and analysis and and uh, uh, the the work of parliamentarians in trying to improve the work of the government. Uh, in uh, all the different areas um, uh, that uh, the government is um, is uh, called upon uh, to uh, to to uh, yes apply policies that uh, would come from the government of the day from the executive, uh, but indeed uh, have to be uh, undertaken. Uh, operationalized, uh, measured, uh, resourced, uh, budgeted for, and then uh, undertaken by public servants. And that is why uh, Mr. Christofferson was so adamant uh, and, and in fact, he said, and I don't want to see ministers here. And I'd actually, I'd, I, I think if I had more time, I would look up the uh, quotes. He said, I don't want to see ministers here. I want to see, because they can appear in other committees where they're going to talk about policies and, and, and so on. He says, there are other um, avenues. But the people that I want to see in public accounts are I'm, the officials ex who are me. ultimately responsible. I, I'm, I'm just... I am going to press relevance a little bit. I, I appreciate what a previous member said who is no longer in the parliament, no longer chair of this committee. I will remind uh, the member that this is a witness that this committee agreed should be on the witness list. And it, I believe it was passed unanimously by this committee. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to turn things back over to you, Ms. Shanahan, but um, uh, I'm, I'm going to point out relevance if, if, uh, if you go back to a member who's no longer on this committee. Mm -hmm when this committee decided unanimously to call in the minister. Indeed. And, uh, Chair, I'm just uh, recalling uh, back to what I said at the time and uh, why you know, the, having the minister appear, uh, who we have had appear here before, uh, is... Um, Yes, I, I, I guess some, some members do uh, feel that it's a joke. Uh, I'm uh, sorry to, uh, to see that. Or, order, uh, order. Ms. Shannon, you have, have the floor. Please, uh, look, yes. please, everyone, maintain your respect. If you need to stretch your legs, I'd ask you to go outside. Ms. Shannon, you have the floor. Well, thank you, uh, Chair. Um, and why am I going into uh, this kind of... Uh, uh, depth on this issue is because, as my colleague pointed out, we're going from an, uh, a letter of invitation to, like, DEFCON 10 on, on where we're going on this. So I think that there is certainly, um, as we have done with other uh, witnesses here, uh, there's certainly uh, room uh, to, uh, for the committee to uh, reiterate uh, the request, to write another letter, to look for, and Chair, you have said this yourself. Um, there's a reason why uh, we uh, normally do not, we cannot compel um, uh, ministers uh, to come here because uh, they have, uh, of course, uh, very busy schedules and uh, we try as much as possible, which I believe the uh, clerk could confirm, uh, to uh, work with the uh, minister's uh, schedules. And, uh, and so maybe it is just simply a matter of that. Um, the uh, 
letter from the minister indicated that she was uh, appearing before Ainan, where she should uh, rightfully so appear, on this very same topic on, G on June 3rd. And uh, I can't speak for the minister, but I would it, it, I could see where uh, she felt that that was uh, that that was uh, you know, answering um, the call. So uh, I, I, I uh, could go on further, Chair. Uh, but I think, uh, in the interest of uh, coming to ground on uh, on something here, I would propose the following amendment. Um, now, uh, do we have, uh, Chair, do we have the uh, wording of the motion? Can the clerk read Let that Let me out check for with us? The, 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 the clerk. clerk. I, I believe it was sent to Okay, because I just want to see Is that right, clerk? where the... Oh, um, okay. No? On voit l'envoyé tout de suite, pardon. Okay, moi. We'll send it right away. We get all kinds of emails before the meeting or during. Mr. Dejla, we're just waiting for the <clears throat> uh, your motion to be s distributed, uh, and then Ms. Um, Shanahan has an amendment to your motion. Shannon, would you would you be able to read your uh, amendment? Yes. Yes. So, uh, I move the following amendment that the committee request the Minister of Indigenous Service Canada appear before the Standing Committee of Public Accounts regarding the Auditor General's report on Indigenous housing and that if the minister does not confirm a date in which she attends, intends, sorry, I think there's some, uh, some spelling here, intends to appear by May 23rd, 2024, that the committee and then the rest of um, Mr. Desjardins' okay. motion. All right. Would you just repeat? Uh, sorry, I, I heard it, but I'm going to ask you to repeat that because I thought that's what you might do. So you're you're at looking to add a couple of lines mm -hmm. at the top. Would you would you repeat that? And I'll ask Mr. Desjardins to pay careful attention. And once you've repeated, I just want to ask a question, Mr. Sabera, did you have your your hand up to speak after this? I know Mr. Desjardins does. Mm -hmm. you, you might as well. You can get back to me. I'm going to turn to Mr. Desjardins next. But Ms. Shanahan, could you just read that again, and then mm -hmm. and then afterwards send it to the clerk? that the committee request the Minister of Indigenous Services Canada appear before the Standing Committee of Public Accounts regarding the Auditor General's report on Indigenous housing, period, and that if the Minister does not confirm a date in which she intends to appear by May 23rd, 2024, that the committee, and then, and then insert. Go. All right, thank motion. you. So yeah, Mr. Desjardins, day, that is an amendment, amendment to your motion. Uh, how do you feel about it? It's, it's in, in essence giving the minister two weeks to give us a date. Thank you, Chair. And, and, and I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Desjardins. Yeah. No, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And uh, although I appreciate the motion, I believe the motion has been in effect. Uh, and to the, to the effect of what the member just 
read as an amendment has been the effect of my motion some odd weeks ago. Um, maybe, Chair, the clerk can read out the date of the original request, the follow-up request subsequently, and I think the member would then see that there's a pattern and it's uh, clear to me, to which is why I, I believe the motion, um, sh I, I would reject the amendment. And I'd hope that the member could see that we have provided enough, enough time. Thank you. Um, so, I'm, I, as I'm prone to do, I'm not going to bring the, the clerk into our discussions. Uh, she is in the process of checking when this motion was passed. Um, and what was done by our committee clerk was to send the minister the invitation with follow-ups. As the clerk does so well, and with me asking as well, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to put the clerk in this. In this I'm not going to bring the clerk into this. But she she did her job, and I asked about it frequently, and uh, and was always told I followed up, and I will do so again. Do you have the date by chance? Yes, this uh, this was adopted before on at committee on 11th when we had uh, the the 11th of April the when we of had April. the uh, initial meeting on report to uh, housing and First Nations communities um, that was sent the very next morning at 9:28 a.m. and several follow-ups were done until we got our final response on Tuesday, oh, sorry Monday at 6:06 yeah. p.m. Thank you. So that's there's where things stand. I'm just before, um, so thank you, Mr. Dejali. Mr. Sabera, I, I do see your colleague, Ms. Shanahan, has her hand up. I didn't, I, I, I might have seen your hand before. I, would, I just want to double check. But the floor is yours if you would like. No, no, I'll, I'll uh, take my, put my hand down for the time being if right. you need to intervene when it's appropriate. Ms. Shanahan. The amendment, uh, correct, uh, Chair? So I we are speaking on the amendment. That is correct. That is right. So, uh, Chair, I think it's, you um, uh, it is, uh, I, I'm very sorry that it, it's had to come to, to this point, but I think we're just trying to uh, put forward um, in, uh, I think, fairly strong uh, language uh, that uh, we are um, uh, expecting that the minister uh, provide the committee uh, with an answer. We provided a date there as well. Uh, about appearing before this um, this committee, uh, I think it's um, you know rather um, almost unprecedented because I believe that it it it, it has happened uh, uh, under uh, in a previous government um, under um, I would say somewhat more egregious uh, circumstances. Um, but uh, given that um, uh, members here feel very strongly uh, about the uh, minister appearing, um, and uh, you know, frankly, um, in keeping, I think, with the um, uh, what I like to see as the as the non-partisan and uh, uh, more uh, professional and objective uh, proceedings of this committee uh, that uh, we make it um, with this amendment. Uh, I think we're stating in very strong uh, terms that we expect to see uh, the minister um, uh, make that, um, and uh, you know, I have no idea what her schedule is. I have no idea uh, what's on her plate. We're coming to the end of a very uh, busy sitting. Uh, she will be appearing at INAN, as has been confirmed um, uh, in her well by our um, colleague here, is a member of INAN, uh, Mr. Schmail, and uh, also by the letter that the. Uh, clerk received, which I think is is uh, certainly in the normal course of things. Uh, as I say, I, I um, uh, regret that it, it uh, 
has to uh, come to, uh, to this, but I think that we're showing uh, on our side uh, in the spirit of, um, of working with uh, uh, Mr. Desjardins and other members who um, seem to feel that that is not sufficient that the minister appears at INAN, that we will continue, yes. So um, I do not like to break up the debate. Uh, I am at the risk of losing 